All right, ladies and gentlemen, that one was a big deal. Uh, Seahawks going to Philadelphia and win 17 to 9. Um, weird game for sure. Definitely a lot of adverse conditions that negatively affected both teams significantly, in my opinion. But uh, I think this one was huge. And I, I mean, there are some things that need to be understood when you're talking about a game like this. But this one was big for me. The way this game played out, even more than just getting the win, was big to me. Because, look, this morning when I woke up, I checked Twitter and I saw, oh, it's raining in Philadelphia. And I was like, uh-oh. And then I saw the wind was heavy in Philadelphia. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't like where this is going at all. And then we got the news about Clowney, where Clowney's going to be out. <clears throat> and... You know, in my head, even though I felt good about this game, and I still did to a certain degree, I saw some things lining up in a way that I really didn't like. So, going into kickoff, I was like, okay, all right, we're, we're going to need Wilson to overcome his long-standing Achilles heel of not being able to play good in bad weather games. We're going to need other players on defense to step up. We're going to need the, you know, suddenly... I, I saw the path to defeat. I saw the way in which we could actually drop this game. And the offense, it played out just like I was afraid of, right? <clears throat> because Wilson was bad. A lot of it wasn't totally on him. DK Metcalf had two big drops, which, uh, you know, he showed his age today. Not a very good game from DK. He dropped what would have been a touchdown. He dropped a big play on the first drive. He had a third one, too, that I think the pass just led him by maybe six inches too far. But uh, <clears throat> we didn't get much from DK. Lockett was mostly a decoy. He was not really part of the game plan. He's clearly not healthy. Um, Carson Carson sucked. The only thing Carson gave us today was some good stuff through the air on those screen passes and dump offs. He did some good stuff. But Carson, another bad game from Carson. <clears throat> and, you know... Beyond the scope of this one game, if you trust Chris Carson right now, you are out of your mind. That dude needs to stop getting touches, period. I don't care how good he is with the touches where he doesn't fumble, because the touches where he fumbles are crippling. They are crippling us. Uh, offensive line got beat down for a lot of this game. We had multiple penalties on um, Mike Upati, false starts. We had a holding on George Fant. Offensive line gave up six sacks, opened up very little in the running game for a good chunk of that game. Not a good game from almost anybody on the offense. The only guy on offense who really showed up today and gave a big performance was Rashad Penny. And on a day where Chris Carson again makes the case for him getting placed on the bench, it, it, it just seemed very appropriate that Penny would finally have a big game. The biggest game of his career so far. And it's not even close. Uh, 14 carries, 130 yards, a 58-yard touchdown that kind of broke this game open. <clears throat> awesome game from him. He had other big carries as well. But he was the only guy on offense who really played well today. I know that, you know, the wind was obviously a factor. And I, I can point to several of Wilson's throws today that were clearly affected by the wind. And... Even with that, I still say that he did not play well. So the recipe is clearly there for this team to drop a game against a team that you would expect to beat. You would, you, you can kind of see all this stuff lining up, but the team won anyway. And that's why this is a big deal to me. Because the defense, without their best or second best player, you know, Clowney, he's in the top three at least. Bare minimum, he's top three in terms of the best players on this defense. Sitting out, you don't have him, <clears throat> and we won this game anyway, you know? The defense showed up without one of their star players, and we got a pass rush, you know, without our best pass rusher. Anza finally had a good game. I don't know if it was just a one-time fluke thing or if maybe he was able to get back into playing shape over the bye week. I don't I don't know what it was. 
But Anza played great today. Multiple hits on the quarterback, a sack and a half. Reed played good today. Rasheem Green made a big play, forcing a big fumble early in this game. You know, we needed those turnovers. Those turnovers were a huge, huge deal for us managing to hold on to this game somehow. So we got a pass rush from guys who have not been playing that well so far this season. Um, the, the, the secondary, I said that, you know, today was going to be kind of an easy matchup for them because the Eagles receivers were crippled and they mostly held up their end. Shaquille played a pretty good game other than a really bad penalty that took a turnover off the board. Uh, he had a really bad holding call that, uh, you don't need to hold that dude. He's not a threat to you. Just play straight up defense. Um, we got a great game from Trey Flowers, I thought, and he got rewarded with the interception right at the end. I'm really happy for him. McDougald had a good game. He got an interception early that was big as well. Um, K.J. Wright, and I'll, I'll give it up to Michael Kendricks as well. I thought those guys played, I mean, I've been really hard on Kendricks this year, and I've even been a little hard on K.J., but I thought both those guys showed up today. And basically, we won a game where Wilson did not play well, where Carson was terrible, and the only good player on offense really was your backup running back. And that's the kind of stuff I've been looking for all season long because you know I've said it a few times this season already, and I, I'm still not completely in the mindset of we're back to the way we were in 2013, of course, but I said this team cannot win a game unless Wilson plays amazing. And today Wilson was subpar to bad. And we found a way to win anyway. Win pretty convincingly, by the way. Now, look, the Eagles, they got no receivers. Their best receiver today was a dude I'd never heard of before today. They got, they're crippled at running back because they don't have a Jordan Howard who has been their best guy. The entire right side of their offensive line was a bit of a mess today. And it wasn't until the third quarter when they subbed some guys out, they pulled uh, Dillard out, did they um, really get anything going. But I understand that. <clears throat> and this is still a big deal. Getting this win is still a big deal. Because I've seen this defense not play well against not very good offenses multiple times this year already. I've seen us give up 500 yards damn near to Jared Goff and their Rams offense that really just hasn't been that good this year. I've seen us get destroyed by Tampa Bay and they're, you know, it's a, it's not a bad offense, but it, it's, it's, it shouldn't be that good. So to see this defense without one of their best players come to life and just lay the wood to an offense that even crippled is still an NFL offense I needed to see that. I needed to believe that this team could win a game without Wilson doing all the heavy lifting, without Chris Carson carrying the ball for 150 yards. And we got that in a big way today. So this was big to me. I understand we're not going to play an offense worse than the Eagles for the rest of the season, for sure. I mean, on top of all that shit I just said about their offense being crippled, Wentz was terrible. And the weather affected a few of his throws as well. I mean, Wilson's throws got affected by the wind a few times, no doubt. But Wentz had the same problem. And even, even with that, Wentz was terrible. Don't get me wrong. So I know this was life on easy mode for this defense. But I don't care. <clears throat> I needed to see this team get it done without Wilson carrying them. And today, he kind of got carried. You can even say that... You know, if you were to count down the players of this game, the best players on the field for the Seahawks today, you would have to go down that list pretty far before you got to Wilson. You know, you'd go through Penny. You'd probably go through K.J. Wright. You might go through Kendricks. You might go through uh, Ziggy Anza, of all people, Rasheem Green. Wilson had one great, great play today. The, the beautiful uh, trick play touchdown to Malik Turner, which was awesome, by the way. Shout out Malik Turner. We... We really needed that big play today, and you delivered because, you know, DK wasn't catching him. Lockett was, most of the game, it seemed like he couldn't get open, and uh, we, we just we just just didn't have it today. And 
you know, I said in my pregame video, the key to this game was to attack their secondary. Felt like we never really got the opportunity to attack their secondary. So I don't know if they're better than I thought. I don't know if it was all on the offensive line. I don't know if it was Wilson. You know, the, the, the weather was big. I get that. But I thought the key to this game would be scoring a bunch of points through the air. And the fact that we were still able to get this win without that tells me something about where this team is going into December. All right. Um, the the bad things that come out of this game, uh, Reed uh, was hurt. We have to just hope it's not significant because we are going to need that dude. <clears throat> Puna Ford got hurt. We have to hope that's not significant. Obviously need that dude because the Vikings next week, we need an answer for Dalvin Cook because he's been killing teams so far this year. And without Puna, without Reed, and possibly without Clowney, depending on where he is, we don't have an answer for Dalvin Cook. And we won't have an answer for Kirk Cousins, who, who unlike the Eagles today, actually has some wide receiver options to throw to that are not just guys off the street, basically. So we need to cross our fingers that our guys are going to get back in time for the Minnesota game. Luckily, we have an extra day off, but I'm holding my breath a bit on that. But big win today, guys. Not just because the win is important, but we needed to see the team win a game like this. And we did. We forced turnovers. We got pressure on the quarterback. We, we tackled pretty well for most of the game. And the offense, which honestly was a net negative today, got carried by this defense. And it's been a while since we've seen that. And it felt good. That's two good games in a row for this defense. You can win a title with a defense playing like this. Now, can we keep this up going forward? Are we going to get some of the key guys back? We're going to have to wait. But uh, I'm going to go live on live uh, stream in like maybe 15 minutes after this video uploads. Maybe even a little earlier. But go Hawks. Good win today. But we're going to be playing more imposing offenses than that later in the season. Let's just hope we don't have to deal with those conditions again for the rest of the year because we clearly cannot handle it.